got a master temp 400 and I'm going to do a thermal regulator replacement. Thermal regulators right here on the outside of the manifold you can access where the thermal regulator is with the regular screwdriver shaft. Stick it in there and you can rotate it. And you can pull it out. This thing's gonna be under a lot of pressure. It's gonna wanna shoot right at the last second. So beware of that and be ready for it. I'm gonna do it one handed and hope it doesn't pop me. Okay, it's getting lighter, it's about to pop. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can get it to come out. Oh yeah, that's not even seated right. Yeah, this thing's, it's not seated right. So I'm gonna go in and test it. It's closed. As you can see, it's sealed. I'll show you how one is supposed to function. Okay, so here's my thermal regulator. I'm in the kitchen sink with all hot water. I'm just gonna run it over the thermal regulator and see if that opens this valve. Closed. Yeah, it's not moving at all. It should be moving by now. It doesn't take very long for it to for the material to start moving. Okay, so that's that's what one looks like when it doesn't move, and that's a lot of corroded material around it. This is what happens when you don't take care of your pool chemicals. It will rot your equipment. Yeah, I think I'm done with this one. This is definitely shot. So let's get this one here. This will be a new one. Right here, I'm grab it. I'll try and do this while I'm holding the video. Okay, so this one also, new, is uh, closed as you can see. Now watch what happens whenever you run hot water over it. Got to be 120 degree water or more. All right, see how it's lifting up a little bit? Still opening. See how much there is hanging out the top of it now? That should let the water pass. That's uh, a functioning thermal regulator now. That's about full open right there. It's enough to fit a, the head of a screwdriver through. Now, I can turn this around, make sure it properly closes. Okay, fully open. In this position, you can see that much of it hangs out. That's about how much it opens. And let's see if we can make that go flat. It's cold water. Okay, and that's how fast it reacts to the cold water. It's now completely closed. So I'm gonna go stick that sucker back in there and hopefully that'll fix my problem I'm having with my heater um, going into service heater mode. There's no error lights on it right now, but it does go into service heater mode and shuts down. It only goes through like a cycle or two. And uh, hopefully this will fix that. All right, I got the new thermal regulator mounted on the spring. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm at the panel now. Turn the pool on. Uh, heater is not on. Go in spa mode. Nope, missed the button. 
Okay, so it's water's 55, trying to reach 92. The heater should turn on now. R8, revision 8 software. It's calling for heating. Five more seconds and the valve should open. The gas valve should open. There it goes. And we're up. And I'm going to give it a second to see if uh, it kicks out because I usually waited about 20 30 seconds. And then it would give me a service heat heater light with no error lights on the back side of the membrane board, back, back side of the circuit board, the control board. Okay, so while this is heating, if you hold down, if you got it programmed to heating the pool, that light will be on. If you got it programmed to be heating the spa, that light will be on right now at the spa. If you hold down that for five seconds, two, three, four, five, that'll show you the temperature that your stack flu sensor is detecting on the side of your exhaust pipe there, side of your stack flu. So it's running 266. This thing usually settles around 290, 295, something like that. So it's still heating and it hasn't turned off at all yet. So I've definitely uh, think I've fixed my problem here. I'm already gaining temp. So, all right, that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it.